In the previous movie, I briefly introduced you to the trace statement. In this movie, we'll get a little bit deeper into it. So, we'll start a new Action Script 3.0 project. Click on the first frame and hit F9 on a PC or Option F9 on a Mac. And like we did before, we simply write a trace, a set of empty parentheses, and a semicolon. Now first, the semicolon is like a period at, an end, at the end of a sentence, because ActionScript is just another language with its syntax and punctuations. So a semicolon is kind of like a period at the end of a sentence. It declares, it determines the end of a statement. And within, within this set of parentheses, we're going to type what we want to be traced. But that has to be within a set of double quotations. So we'll write, this is some code. And let's run this in the emulator first. Control enter test your movie. And we see that nothing appears here. Instead, it appears in my output panel. This is some code. And why does that happen? That is because the trace statement doesn't actually allow you to output any text to the user. Instead, the trace statement uh, outputs text that only the developer can see. Now, why could that be useful? Well, imagine that you're writing some code, but you do not know if it runs correctly or not. So to test it, you simply run the code and at the end of it, you write a trace statement. Now, this trace statement only works if your code runs correctly. This is one case that a trace statement can be used. There's a lot of other cases where you can use a trace statement and we'll get to that later on. For now, just know that the trace statement allows you to trace some code in your outputs panel. One thing to note is that the trace statement outputs exactly what's within these double quotations. So if I had, let's say, 5 plus 2 within the double quotations and test my movie, it will output 5 plus 2. But what if I wanted it to trace and calculate what I'm inputting here? Simply, I can lose the double quotations only if I'm writing something that has been previously defined. Let me explain. Any computer knows what a number 5 is. So if I write 5 without the double quotations and run my emulator, it outputs 5. But if, and if I, let's say, type in 5 plus 2 and test my movie, it outputs 7. Well, simply because 5 and the addition and 2 are predefined in ActionScript. That is, ActionScript knows what a 2 is and knows how to add numbers. This is called a predefined function. We'll get into functions in a later movie. But for now, you should know that ActionScript already knows how to add, how to multiply, how to subtract, and how to divide. So if I had, let's say, 5 minus 2, it will output 3. But if I had, let's say, the letter T within it, and test my movie, I'll get an error. Axis of undefined property T. So what does that exactly mean? I mean, everyone knows what a letter T is. Well, how could a computer not know what does T mean? Well, that has to do with something called variables. The letter T can be the name of a variable, but right now I haven't declared any variables. So for ActionScript, T is a value or a name for a yet to be declared variable. So it doesn't know what to do with it. If I wanted it to trace the letter T, I'd simply put it within double quotations, like so. And now, it outputs t. Now, what a variable is, is something that we will discuss in the next movie.